Hey folks, so today I got yet another backlight kit. If you couldn't tell from the uh, title of the video, and if you can't tell from what I got in front of me, this is for the uh, Game Boy Advance SP here. Uh, so what this is, this is the next iteration of the Cloud Game Store Game Boy Advance kit. Uh, I did that install in this bad boy a little while back. Um, as far as I can tell, it is the exact same kit, just with an SP or with a ribbon for installing in an SP. Mine even has the exact same markings on the PCB, though I did take a look at the listing photos and uh, it looks like they rearranged the PCB slightly for use in the SP. So I don't know, I don't know if this is like a new version and they had an old version pictured or vice versa. Uh, but either way, the unit that I have in front of me was a. Um, is a second-hand sample unit that was sent to a uh, retro game repair shop. Um, so mine did come with the lens already stuck down to the screen. Uh, I think the seller did that before they even shipped it off to RGRS, but um, I do know that the final retail kits, um, I don't know if they're coming with a lens at all, but I know that the lens is not pre-applied to the LCD and is definitely not laminated, which is a bit of a bummer, I think, but um, it is what it is. I would pay extra for a laminated LCD, it just looks that much better, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Um, another interesting thing with mine in particular is that they didn't bother removing the film on the LCD before sticking it down to the lens, so now I've got... Um, little bubbles under the screen and a little mark in the corner there that I just I can't do anything about without trying to peel this off and I don't want to do that until after I test it out in case I break this. This is the exact same LCD that is used in the Game Boy Advance kit, uh, exact same model number and everything and then like I said this ribbon here is the exact same that was in the Game Boy Advance one but ribbon um, adapter PCB but uh, it does have like I said, the the listing shows a, a different model, so I don't I don't know what's what. I will probably be doing another video when these uh, actually start shipping and come out for real. Uh, the listing does also mention that the retail version will not have this little touch sensor on the ribbon, which, quite frankly, I am perfectly okay with because where it is, I can't imagine that it'll work well enough as is anyway. Um, lots of people have noticed that the uh, touch sensor tends to go off on its own on the Game Boy Advance kit. Um, I will say I haven't had that experience, but mine is also adhered to the shell. If you don't adhere it to the shell, you know, maybe it bounces around on top of the ribbon when it's installed and just the, the high-speed data signaling is enough to trigger it. I don't know. And, but either way, this is more or less what you get. You get the screen, the adapter, and then the ribbon, and then you have to stick it onto the lens itself, and then you have to drop it into your SP. There is no soldering required unless you want brightness controls. Um, yes, mine does have a touch sensor for brightness, but that is not going to be included on the final version. Uh, it looks like... nope. Never mind. I was going to say it looks like there might be something you could solder to on the PCB to make your own brightness sensor, but we went over this last time and there I don't believe that there is any. Um, I'll play with it though. We'll, we'll find out. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's do the install here. Uh, so I am going to be using this SP here today. This is a complete, mostly working SP. I just realized I completely forgot to grab a battery, but I think I can make it work anyway. Let me grab a screwdriver here. And I will just have to pull a battery out of one of my other consoles. Hopefully this one has something good in it. No, that's terrible, but it'll work. All right. And the reason for the extra screen is because the screen that is in this SP is dead, so. Also, I have lost the square nut for this thing, so I have tape holding on the battery cover. But... 
Oh, now it's working. I swear it didn't work before. Interesting. Well, what do you know? Do I have a back or a front light? I do. I even have a front light. Anyway, this is an SP that I bought online for relatively cheap because it had a messed up link port, charge port, and battery connector. Um, and I did have to do some PCB repairs to this one to get the uh, uh, charge port working, but I did install one of those new USB Type-C kits. I did a video on this a while back, but um, new ones have come out since that I haven't done a video on. Uh, there's a new one by Roarsaurus that includes two resistors on the CC lines for USB-C, which means you can use it on a USB Type-C host. That is, if both sides of your connector look like this, then it'll charge with this. Or with, with, the, with Roarsaurus's version, whereas the one that I did a video on only works on USB type A hosts. Um, the version that's in this particular SP is from the same company that does most of the backlight kits at this point uh, that I refer to as Cloud Game Store. Oh. <laughs> Gotta take out all the screws, huh? And they made this looks pretty much the same as Roar Source's version because there's only so many ways you can do it. Uh, but you can see here the uh, bodge line that I had to run and there's another bodge wire on the other side. Uh, let's pop this apart. So just for ease of testing, I'm going to use the other screen that I have anyway. Because it just makes my life so much easier. Alright, we're going to set this to 3.7. plug this in and same game I usually test with my Pokemon Emerald here gotta turn the power supply on and this will be our baseline the front light is on game, same place I pretty much always test. We are pulling at 3.7 volts, 52 to 57 milliamps. And let's swap out the screen here. Oop. Forgot those are not stuck together. My ribbon looks pretty beat up. Hopefully it's okay. I know it looks kind of dark, but believe me, that's just because I have a lot of lights on. As I turn lights off, it should get quite a bit brighter. But it is still pretty dark nonetheless. All right, so in the overworld, we're pulling 57 to 69 milliamps. So a little bit more, but really not that much. Let's see, does this touch sensor do anything? 
Yeah, the touch sensor doesn't even do anything on mine. Oh yeah, it does, you just have to hold it. It went down, but the power usage didn't even change. Went up. Power usage did change a little bit, but it looks like it's peaking now at 75. Valley's 63 or so. So we have it at max brightness. Let's see if it remembers the brightness level. Oh, I touched something. I just have to touch the console. And it. Uh, this is probably why they got rid of the uh, touch sensor. Because I'm just hitting any one of the system grounds and it's triggering the touch sensor. That's annoying. But let's see if it remembers the brightness setting. I don't know if it just defaults to high brightness. I think it does. Now I can't get it to trigger at all. I have to take my hand off the console, that's why. test it later. I'll wire up the button controls and then we'll test it that way. That would be much easier than getting frustrated with this touch sensor nonsense. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind touch sensors as an option. I just, I don't like them when they're required if you want brightness controls. Uh, let's continue taking this thing apart. I started cleaning this, but I didn't get very far because I figured I'd just use it for parts. Get my lights back on. So I can see! Okay. And time for my least favorite part. I like using a plastic tool for this because it is much more difficult to damage either the um, screw cover or the surrounding plastic. Or, I don't know what I just said, but I feel like I just said it's much easier uh, because it's more difficult to damage. Though it's still pretty easy. Especially when that happens. And just try and rub it back and forth to slip it in the gap and circle it around to break the adhesive free and then pull it up. Um, it has been suggested before to use like a sewing needle and uh, you know that, that works. I like the spudger though.
Cool, cool, cool. I guess the adhesive stuck down for this one. We'll just leave it stuck to the screw. but I wonder if that has something to do with why it wasn't working before. I'm going to pause a moment and um, clean up whatever that is. Alright, no idea what that was, but I'm guessing it was some sort of oil, but it is all cleaned up now, and it only took a little bit of the paint off. Anyway. So this drops right in here. No trimming necessary. We want to give that the same twisty curve. And I ought to do something with this, but I just don't know what to do with it. I'm going to fold it back. And hope for the best. No trimming necessary. slight bulge on this side and on this side, but I think that's just the shell to be honest. Should have checked it beforehand, but I wasn't thinking of that. let's do brightness controls so oh god dang it sorry knocking stuff over um brightness control is completely optional but I like it and uh, it's easy enough to add I have no idea if the uh, final kits will be coming with wire, I assume. I assume they would, I don't see why not. Uh, but don't quote me on that, mine did not. Mine's also like twice as long as it needs to be. And it gets soldered to the little test point marked Q12B.
And yeah, I'm so used to having to bring this around and then wrap it over. This actually goes on this side. So it can be much shorter than that. Um, I think I'm going to leave it long and just wrap it around anyway, though. Just to give some slack. I feel like that's the safest option. Not an easiest spot to get to, but not too bad, all things considered. Pretty similar to every other kit for uh, SP. Don't forget your little square nut. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna have to live without it for the time being. I'll find it eventually. Though to be honest, this SP is probably just gonna get reshelled. So, not too worried about it. So it looks like my screen is a little bit crooked. Um, unfortunately, that is something that comes with the territory of having to apply the lens to the LCD itself. And I can complain about it instead of taking responsibility because mine was pre-applied. So I don't like it. I really wish they would offer laminated LCDs, but I would actually be interested in paying extra for that. But I mean, it, it looks pretty darn good. Let me, let me kill the lights here. I don't see any skipping. I don't see any frame dropping, any tearing. Darn solid to me. 
my brightness control does not work at all, which is unfortunate, but that might be um, should be attached right here, I think. I can't trigger the touch sensor either. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to take another look when the um, final version of this kit comes out. So I have no brightness control, not even if I hold it. Yeah, nothing. Shame, but at least we can take a look at the other stuff. Let me get my easy flash here. I guess I won't be taking a look at that power usage again. Uh, let's go into 240p. Uh, what do we want? We want full screen stripes? No, that's not what I want. I can't remember what it's called. I'll just keep going until I find it. That's it. Grid. So what I like about the grid is that you can see if any of the LCD is cut off. So this white area is like the primary zone where everything on screen important happens. This red area is the border where, you know, there, there's still screen data, but chances are pretty good if anything's happening there. It's not really important. And then you can see there should be a red pixel line all the way around the outside and you can see it gets cut off on the right here but it's on the bottom it's on the Ooh, sorry memory card was full totally lost my train of thought um so where i was leaving off some of the screen area is slightly cut off but this is a stock size lens maybe a slightly larger lens can help especially since this you know you need to apply a lens to this anyway um i don't know but I will say you're not going to miss having that extra bit of information. Uh, it is going to get cut off either on one side or the other. There's just no way around that unless you're getting a custom lens. Um, something I obviously skipped over in this video was applying the lens to the screen. What you want to do is uh, you want to plug it in for testing like I had at the beginning of the video and then turn it on and then stick the lens down to the screen while it's on so that you can make sure everything's lined up. Um, and that's basically what they did here, but they gave it to me already stuck down. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, we can go through the other tests and I mean, it looks fantastic. Yeah. So you can see there's a little bit of data lost on the right, but it's it looks like it's literally just one pixel, or at least not necessarily one pixel, but um, since this screen does use linear scaling, I guess it's technically two pixels. But I don't know, looks, looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, There's the scrolling, looks pretty good. Oh, let's do um, Game Boy tests. Because that um, reset test is always pretty good. Bring that in just a wee bit. So, You've heard me say it a thousand times at this point, but what this does is this shows if there's any um, hesitation, stuttering, or scrolling, um, not scrolling, uh, tearing uh, by just moving these bars across the screen at a steady rate. Every time this S in the word scrolling goes across the left side of the screen, the Game Boy is issued an LCD reset command, which will cause at least one dropped frame uh, and that's how it works on OEM screens as well as aftermarket. Uh, some aftermarket screens are a lot worse than others, but this one is 
uh, basically the same as the last few have been. Um, handles it perfectly fine. I see no issues. Um, like I said, there's that expected drop and then nothing else, which is exactly how it should be working. So let's try... Dizel the test. That way we can see if there's any weird um, pixel response issues. Some of the other kits have some nasty artifacts as a result of the pixel overdrive used. And so we're looking for two different things here. We can test two things with this game. First, we look at this guy's chain. Um, the original Game Boy did not have a way to achieve uh, transparent sprites. Uh, but due to the abysmal pixel response time of the original screens, devs found a workaround where they just toggle the sprite on and off real quick, and that gives you a uh, slightly transparent result. Um, because the response rate of a lot of newer kits is so much better, uh, that results in some quite visible flickering. But it looks like this is actually giving one of the one of the best results someone could hope for, where it is. You, you, you see a little bit of flickering if you look for it, but it is largely transparent looking. And I apologize if the camera's not picking up too well on this. Um, there's only so much you can do when you're filming a screen. But trust me when I say it does look... looks really good in person here. Uh, now the other thing we want to take a look at um, when the screen transitions like this, this green to brown transition of the fence and grass usually results in some pixel overdrive, some, some artifacting as it scrolls across. Um, and I do see a little bit of that here, but I'm having to really look for it. Uh, other kits are significantly worse than this one. I'd say this is a very solid pass, as opposed to a fail, not as in pass on this and get something else. Uh, pass as in it did well uh, So yeah, that's that gets my seal of approval The biggest thing at this point and let me pop emerald back in here And I will get Another Game Boy right here And That's not emerald <gasps> All right, fine, we'll use my flashcard. So this one on the left is the funny playing. Uh, funny playing backlight kit with laminated LCD. And of course, that's the Japanese copy of the game, but the colors and such are going to be the same. So you can see the difference between the image quality of these two. Um, hands down, I still think the funny playing one is better, but this is still really good. The brightness is also significantly, significantly different. Um, I can actually measure it, but I don't think... I'm not going to provide data on the brightness of this because my brightness control does not seem to be working as it should, and because this is a pre-release kit. So I can tell you looking at it that this one's a lot brighter, but I'm not going to give you numbers until I get my hands on a uh, production kit. Oh, and unfortunately, I'm in a different spot. Do I have a flying Pokemon? I do. Better. There's less glare on the screen. You can see just the contrast on this one is a lot better. Uh, I guess it's more saturated. Um, Pokemon Emerald for you. 
I don't know why everyone likes this game so much. You get spammed with phone calls every freaking 30 seconds. But, yeah, looking at the two side by side, this one definitely looks better. I can understand the appeal of wanting something that literally just drops in. That is fantastic. And looking at the power usage, this one is significantly better. Uh, but I, I guess it just comes down to, you know, what, what, what do you care about? Because there's trade-offs with every kit. Um, personally, I really like the laminated lenses and I really like the, um, nice oversaturated colors on the funny playing kits. Uh, but I can see, I could see wanting this, uh, cold, gloomy screen, um, because it does actually look pretty darn similar to the stock screen, aside from the fact that it's not as washed out. Um, but it's, you know, it still get, still gives you a gentle reminder. But anyway, I think I need to uh, wrap this video up before I ramble for another 30 minutes about colors. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's all I've got. Uh, so I will throw a link in the description to where you can grab one of these kits if you want. Um, I will try and do another video on them soon uh, when I get my hands on an actual like retail version of the kit that's shipping. Uh, but until then, I'm very pleased with what I see. And uh, yeah, the, the only, only thing, my only complaint is that the lenses do not come pre-applied. Like if the lenses came pre-applied, and if they were laminated, that would this this would this kit would be uh, would be the go-to kit, I think. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.